Okay, so we're doing two things today. We're on the ground at Booker Airfield with the King Air in Microsoft Flight Simulator and also I have a new headset. So this is a bit of a trial to see what the sound quality comes through like. And fingers crossed, you're going to get a much more consistent voice uh, recording from me in concert with the simulator. Now I'm just going to go and look at the levels and they look pretty good in OBS. So I'm coming at about minus 10 on the meter, which is perfect. Okay, so King Air, following World Update 8, or Sim Update 8, I should say, the simulator has a new propeller simulation, and some of the aircraft have it, some don't. The King Air has it at the moment, and it mostly affects turboprops because it allows us to feather the propellers for the first time. So let's go and get the King Air up and running. So just trying to remember how to control this thing so we need the propellers actually let's go and do things in order so we got the batteries turn the avionics on this will give us this the various screens around the cockpit um, now <coughs> I have to try and remember how this works now I've not flown the King Air for a while so we should just be able to got fuel condition which is over here which has moved to idle which is perfect so I've just I've booted this up with the aircraft sat on the parking okay. so we're getting an enunciation from the avionics suite which is perfect so all we should have to do is go and start the engines so if we wait for left here And we wait for this to come up to 50% on N1. It's complaining about the pitot heats, which we can go and sort out down here. So you get various warnings down here until both engines are, are good. So you wait for this to get to 50% and then you can move the lever forwards like so. And we can do the same with the other one. We can also move the propeller forwards for that one. So we're waiting for 50% to come up on the N1 gauge, which you can see here. And we move the fuel mixture from idle through to full. And we move the propeller forwards as well. We can do that already, actually. So it's coming up to 45, 46, 47, and engine condition goes through. Now obviously once the engines are stabilised, you can turn off the ignition. Turn that one off as well. Now we can turn on the generators. And then all the warnings disappear because all the warnings were really to do with was the drain on the battery. Obviously, once you've um, got the engine started and you start the generators, then you don't have any concerns about power generation. We've got the pitot heats already on. Oh, we're going to turn the lights on. It's kind of last on our checklist. So you can see um, we've got the various lights here. So we're going to go for the navigation lights and the recognition lights and the beacon and the strobe. And that should be good to go. Okay, so with the propellers are forwards, we've got, I'm just gonna check that my throttles are mapped so they are. We've got the, the pedals are working. So you might be wondering then, what's so significant about this propeller simulation? So we're sat here on the parking brake so we can have a talk about it for a while. We'll see it in the air as well in a moment. If we were to cut one of the engines, so we cut fuel to the engine, yeah? We can then feather the propeller as well. And you'll see what that does when the, air, when the engine slows down. Give it a few moments for it to spin down, here it comes. Oh, 
Okay, it's not going to do it on the ground. We'll do it in the air to see it happen. So let's go and start this engine again. So we turn on the starter, or the ignition I should say, with it on idle, or high idle as they call it. And wait for the percentage to come up and then we can push the the lever all the way forwards and the engine will be back up and running again. So you can see it's complaining here about ignition is on and the battery amperage. In other words, we're not generating enough power to to run the systems. So there we go. So we can push that through. And we can turn off the ignition now. And the warning goes away. Okay, so let's go and have a fly around and then I'll be able to illustrate what the um, what the feathering really means. So, uh, one of the tricks we can now do, of course, because we are in this aircraft, is we can go for reverse pitch. It's a bit tricky doing it because at rest, this aircraft will accelerate. So we're going to go for flaps. Center the view up so I can see what I'm doing to take off. So we'll look from outside, see where we are. So we're at Booker Airfield, just outside High Wycombe in Buckinghamshire in the UK. So full throttle, hold the centre line, get as much speed as we can and rotate. The wind is kicking us sideways, you can see that straight away. Gear up, flaps up. And we're away. So the the King Air is very very fast. But to illustrate what the new propeller simulation is going to do, I'm going to level out and put the autopilot on. So I'll just turn around. We'll go and fly 60 degrees. So we're going the reciprocal of the runway direction. I'm going to pull the throttles back to about 80%, 85%, so for cruise. So we can see out of the window. Can we see the airfield over there yet? Not quite. So we're just coming up to 2,000 feet, which would be perfect actually. So let's get the nose back down. There we go, 60 degrees. So if I turn the autopilot on, and we'll go for altitude hold mode, which is at 2000 feet, which is perfect. We'll go for heading hold mode, and we'll push the middle so we get 60 degrees on the heading. So the plane's now controlling itself, so we can concern ourselves with What's it saying down here? The yaw damper is not on. Okay, so we go and find the yaw damper switch, and I bet I won't be able to find it. <laughs> so yaw damper is it stops. Oh, there it is. The yaw damper. If you imagine on an aircraft, when the ailerons operate, they cause drag at the end of the wing, which causes the um, the tail to sway either way. So a yaw damper means that when you introduce aileron, it also introduces a small amount of rudder to stop that swaying from happening. Okay. 
so we're flying along I'm just waiting for the speed to steady we're going to be in horrendous weather today but we're not really too worried about that so we're just waiting for the speed to stabilize there you we go there we go so it's about 211 212 knots at the engine setting I've got so what we're going to do is pretend we're killing an engine So we've killed one of the engines. You will notice the plane will start to bank and yaw to maintain 60 degrees. So that's the autopilot doing that for us. Because we only have the thrust from this engine now. This engine is just spinning in the breeze because it has the pitch still configured on it. Yeah. So if you look on the gauges, the propeller speed is still incredibly high yeah engines dead watch what happens now though with the new simulation if we feather the propeller look at the propeller speed so what was happening is the propeller was freely spinning in the wind and there you go look so feathering if we go and look closely has turned the blades towards the air so there is no drag on that engine and you will also find if you go and look carefully we hadn't actually taken notice of this when we were only running on the power of one engine and the other propeller was spinning there was more drag on the aircraft so this is actually will have accelerated ever so slightly so we've got less drag on the aircraft because there's not this great big disc of the propeller whizzing around if we then move the engine condition back to idle and then we start the right engine again we can move the propeller out of feathered you can see this coming up 30 foot 40 percent 50 and then at 50% we can move the engine condition all the way forwards and we can push that and then turn the ignition back off so we're back running and you can see the autopilot is leveling us back out because the thrust has returned from the right hand engine so that's what basically the new um, avionics or the modeling sorry of the propellers that's what it's introduced is you can now feather the propellers properly so the the pitch of the propellers do make a difference on the both the torque and the propeller speed and the thrust okay so let's go and turn ourselves around we were in heading mode we're going to go spin ourselves around to 240 degrees to go back towards Booker. Actually, it's a pretty horrendous day. We ought to look for somewhere with ILS, didn't we? Let's go and do an illustration of an ILS landing. We'll fly back towards Booker anyway. So we're just making this turn. Let's go and have a look on the map. So we, we did a U turn, we flew out. So where could we fly to that has ILS somewhere near? I don't really want to go too near Heathrow. We could go... Oh, Luton's quite a big airfield, isn't it? Although, hmm, it's not a bad idea, though. Yeah, let's go north from here. So rather than go to 240, we're going to spin the heading back around. To north. So we're going to come back up this way and we're going to program the ILS for 109.15. Okay. I'll see if I can remember how to do it in this aircraft. <laughs> so we have to press the menu button and that will pull up this and you should then get the radios appear. Nav 1 frequency. And we want 109.15, 10915. 
and if we press transfer it immediately becomes the active frequency okay so you've got nav one luckily this the um the cdi the course deviation indicator is already in localizer one more or nav it's using the nav one frequency to get this off the screen i think we can just press menu and then menu again and there it goes so it's worth pointing out because this is a localizer so it's not just a, a VOR the course won't do anything yeah so that is the direction of the runway relative to us so it's basically sh saying we are to the right of the localizer into the airfield which we are yeah so relative to that runway we are to the right so we're at 2,000 feet so we will be, be below so generally ILS you're looking at two and a half thousand feet above ground level at the end of the feathers so if we show whoops that's the wrong thing to show on the information for Luton let's have a look it's 500 feet so we need to be 3,000 feet really at this point so we'll we'll be well below the ILS which is fine though because we're not in a very fast aeroplane we are going to slow down a bit so we're going to pull the throttles round And you can see now we've got close enough. We have the glide slope as well as the localizer. So this is our vertical position. This is what I was saying. We are below the glide slope. We're flying level, but we'll fly into it. So if you imagine a line through the sky extending from the runway and getting higher and higher, we are below it at this distance from the runway. If we were somewhere over here, we would probably be on it. OK, so let's start turning right to make the autopilot be able to intercept easily. So if you watch the CDI, the course deviation indicator, it's going to start sliding towards the centre in a moment. And you can see the glide slope is coming down. So we're going to come off the throttles, we've got to start slowing down, and we're going to go for approach mode. See it says GS has come up, so the aircraft should descend towards the runway all on its own. And we can do that because we've intercepted the glide slope from beneath, so the airplane will start descending as soon as that gets into the middle. And there it goes. So we've slowed down enough now to extend flaps. So we're going to go first stage of flaps and continue slowing down. So engines are on idle. And we're going to get the gear down soon. So let's go for the gear. So let's get the landing lights on. If we go and look outside. See, there is a fair amount of mist. So, yes, it was a good reason to use the autopilot. So looking outside the aircraft, you can see the runway we are crabbing, the, so the autopilot's doing that for us. So let's have a look on the map. So we've got 20 knot wind basically from the left. So we're heading, you know, we're turned towards the wind to maintain the runway direction. So we'll get to 200 feet and then we'll have to take over manually. It's quite a significant crosswind for this aircraft. So I'm going for full flaps.
So if anything, we want to be looking sideways across the aeroplane, don't we? Okay, so I've come off of the autopilot now, so we're in control. And we're down. Okay, flaps up and make our way slowly off the runway. So there you go. That's the the King Air with the new propeller simulation. It's very, very good. It makes it a bit more fun, so you can play with the pitch of the propellers, and it actually has a you know a mark difference within the simulator. Let's just go and park up. Okay, somebody parked there. We'll go next door to them. Okay, parking brakes on. Fuel mixture to cut off, to cut the engines. Feather propellers. Obviously we're getting a warning because um, we've just, you know, we're relying on batteries now. So tell that to shut up again. It will keep going off and then we can go and basically turn off the rest of the systems. Um, but yeah, so the King Air is now actually great fun because it has this proper feathering of the propellers. You can see it there, look on the ground, it's done it this time. And it makes it a very different animal in the air and it, you know, it gives you more options for control, which we didn't have before. It supposedly has more drag as well, so if you have not got them feathered, if you've not got the propellers feathered on approach, you will have more drag on the, the air airplane, which is really great. Okay, so that's the King Air Microsoft Flight Simulator following Sim Update 8, which now has the new propeller physics for some of the aircraft. Okay, I'll stop recording there.